Hey folks, it's uh, Dan. Uh, everybody knows about, or should know about, the Four Corners episode that they ran on uh, the 22nd of October, Monday. This is my take on what happened. Um, I'm not going to include everything, and I'm hoping to keep it pretty short. It's just going to be a, a stop, start, pause kind of deal, and uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll have the quick intro, and we'll take it from there, all right? There is a muscling up by those making money out of a trade of guns into this country. The gun debate is very much about money and influence and power. Well, here we are. Let me know if you say what. Your son-in-law is in the business of selling more firearms. Is your party happy to be helping him do that? Absolutely. I want more firearms sold because I want more firearms, you know. I want more people involved in protecting our country all right so that gives you a quick rundown then uh we'll go to the journalist and his little bit and we'll take it from there all right all right so this is where sean nichols comes in let's all notice where he is but he's talking about weapons of war and things like that which like come on we're just regular shooters here <laughs> for weapons of war, it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> the Land Forces Expo in Adelaide draws the top political and army brass. Alright, so he hasn't actually told a mistruth yet, but... If you're in the market for weapons of war, you catch the gist, all right? And you will, sorry about down here, you will occasionally see my hand pop up. All right, so now we're going to cut to Naya, which, as everybody should well know, if you're a shooter, uh, is the Australia's biggest uh, importer of firearms. They've got defence contracts and everything. But the way that this bloke carries on is phenomenal is Australia's largest privately owned gun supplier, a company called Naya. Its owner, Robert Naya, is here doing business. Naya's company holds Australian defence contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars and sells guns and ammunition used by hunters, shooters and the police. Robert Naya is also a founding director of the Gun Lobby Group, the Shooting Industry Foundation of Australia, known as CIFA. Excuse me, Mr. Nyer. Hi. Sean Nichols is my name. Yeah. I'm from the Four Corners program with oh, ABC right. Television. Yeah, How are you? Nyer. Yeah, he goes yeah. well. Now, Robert Nyer is prominent in defence circles, but today prefers to keep a lower profile. Would, would you have a chat with us today? Not really, no. I mean, I'm, I'm here trying to do defence work, uh, focusing on what we can do for the Australian warfighter, creating technologies yeah. um, and export opportunities. But is, is there any particular reason that you wouldn't talk about CIFA to us? I mean, you know, it's something that you're quite open about as a director and there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. We just want to ask you what the purpose is and why you're involved. Everything we're doing is on the website, public forum, and I suspect that you've got a different agenda and you want to say strange things. Well, you won't find out until I ask you the question. That's so right. if That's you've a, got five minutes, no, that'd be great. Right. So I'm in the middle of a meeting. We're trying to give soldiers something to, uh, to, to help them out with. And can you half blame him? That's fair call. You look at any major newspaper in any city of any state in Australia and you know that journalists always try and turn it. This uh, bloke's already tried to, you know, set the tone and Rob knows that if he talks to him, then words are going to get twisted and you're going to chop and change. And some of the uh, reports that I've read, certain people being interviewed for uh, three and a half hours and they only use like 15, 30 seconds worth of their uh, actual interview just to get their, uh, you know, their, their point across um, from the ABC. 
Now, better include this part as well. This is uh, the safer ad because that's what Sean Nichols was talking about. This is what he wants to know about, like with some big scary, you know, group. The Shooting Industry Foundation was launched in late 2014 by five of Australia's biggest firearms wholesalers, including Naya and the Australian subsidiaries of global gun makers Winchester and Beretta. These companies have funded CIFA with more than $1.2 million. All good and well. There's nothing to see here. Uh, they're a group that represents shooters. Um, and Winchester and Beretta, etc. You know, they want to put some money into it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now this is the part where I've got to jump in and stick me ugly muggy in again, right? Oh, it's everybody's favourite, mate. It's Phil. Right? And I went to the trouble of actually making a meme today just for this. Poor Harold. He's disappointed. Alright, let's have a look. See what crap he's got to spill today. This represents the re-emergence of the very well bankrolled industrial gun lobby, which is there not so much to go shooting, but to make a profit. And that's exactly the same as it is in other countries. You've got an industry which is prepared to leap in, and they've got a lot of money. This is the, this is the gun industry lobby redux. They, they've come, they're back, and they're ready to spend. There is a muscling up by those making money out of the trade of guns into this country and we need to watch that very closely sorry tim i, I just got to cut you off there all right so we've dealt with phil right he's talking some crap now we've got tim fisher in um all right so there's companies trying to make money off of firearms i'll give you three quick examples of other companies uh, let's take Woolworths, Coles, and McDonald's, for example. What do you think their whole point of existence is? I think it's to make money. So just because uh, you cater to a firearms group, is that really a big issue? No, I don't think so. Let's see what else Tim's got to say. Australia and the state and territory parliaments uh, legislatures and at the federal level down the wrong path. Hi, I'm Laura Patterson and welcome to CIFA News. It is CIFA... Sorry to cut you off, Laura. We already know you're on the right team, but Tim is not. All right, here comes Bob. Bob's got a few good choice words. Uh, gun ownership. Oh, shit. So Don't know what happened there. Hang on a tick. Sorry about that last one, folks. Don't know what happened. It for some reason skipped through. I know and it's bloody done it again. Shit. Is the party leader Bob Catters? All right, so we'll just record from here. Sorry about before. Your son-in-law. Here comes is Bob. In the business of selling more firearms. Is your party happy to be helping him do that? Absolutely. I want more firearms sold because I want more firearms. You know, I want more people involved in protecting our country. Bob Catter's son, Robbie, is the party's leader in the Queensland Parliament. Does Mr Nye have any policy input into your party's firearms policies? Oh, no, not really, no. We would, we not would really probably... Not really or no? Oh, I'd say a no to that because um, there's, we've got all sorts of avenues to... Um, and, and usually to avoid questions like this in the media, we'd, we'd deliberately get... Right, so we've ascertained that the point of the story is is that Robert Nyer is married to Bob Catter's daughter and Bob Catter's son, Robbie, who's here now. Uh, they're all family now. Now, I don't see any issue with that. It's not like there's some kind of mafia or anything. It's just, this is just starting to get, like, stupid. They're digging and, you know, it's hopeless. 
Let's pick it up from here. I'm hurt by a billboard. For one high profile politician, the election campaign became intensely personal. The state's small business minister became a target after she complained about a gunshot billboard in her electorate. This billboard had an image on it of um, a woman dressed in some Santa gear, if you like, uh, and on the billboard it said, um, Santa knows what you really want for Christmas. And it was a picture of this woman uh, holding a gun. My first reaction to it was one of horror. Horror! This is really Think about the children. The value, uh, the importance of, uh, the responsibility of uh, gun ownership. So many of them. Leanne Enoch launched a Facebook petition to have the ad removed. She said it didn't reflect her community's desire to be gun free. The response was savage. I was receiving threats of sexual uh, violence, of physical violence. I had threats to my life. Um, and that spilt over uh, into some of the. Uh, that spilt over towards some of the people that were actually making positive comments about bringing the billboard down as well. More than 3,000 comments flooded in from Australia and overseas. Among them, let someone break into your house and rape and kill you. Someone shoot this bitch and remember that while being raped. So I'll pause it there for a second. Um, I actually believe those comments are edited. They're not showing the full idea behind it. The way I see it is because there are a lot of Australians, especially if you're talking about Dan Andrews and Melbourne and the problems like that, people want either Castle Doctrine, Standy Ground Laws, whatever and people go and put comments up like that we know it's not helpful but i think that was the premise behind it and it's fully understandable like if some a bunch of dudes try and break into your house you're not going to be happy about it but what 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 does she want a gun free australia like we're not america we never have been we never will be but our culture is completely different here and there's too much red tape behind all our laws and everything. Alright, so now fair's fair. Um, what happened to Leanne Enoch? Um, nobody advocates that at any stage. And here's Sifa's thoughts on it. To bear any responsibility for what happened to Leanne Enoch. It upsets me personally and I'm sure uh, it is... That behaviour is absolutely something that the Shooting Industry Foundation of Australia would condemn. We do not condone in any way any activity of that variety in any form. And that's a fair call because none of our shooters condemn, uh, sorry, condone that at all, which is a fair call. But like I said, I reckon those uh, comments were taken out of context and they were probably edited down. Now here's something that uh, we're all a little bit more accustomed to, especially if you're a range shooter, not just a hunter, you like to go to the range as well. This is the uh, sort of positive side on it. firearms legally registered in Australia. On this Saturday morning, more than a hundred licensed shooters are gathered at Malabar in East Sydney. The news Now we've all seen uh, range shooting before, we all know what it's about, so we'll skip through this bit and go to the next bit. Alright, so I said before, uh, ABC is supposed to be balanced, 50-50. Here comes the uh, balance. Also, like, learn a new thing every day or every week we come out here, as well as the community around it. You, like, meet new heaps of different and new people. And, yeah, I just really enjoy it. At the moment, we've got families out here where they're both Australian representatives um, competing at international, international levels. Um, fathers, sons, um, mothers and their, their, their sons, mothers and their daughters shooting side by side out here, um, competing against each other in 
uh, in a friendly competition, or maybe not so friendly sometimes. A legitimate firearm. All right, and that's fair enough, right? That's the side of shooting that uh majority of Australians don't see anymore and we know that's exactly what it's like it's friendship it's camaraderie it's all of those good things and that's what we love about our shooting it's safe it's fun we already know all of this but that's the pretty much the first time that you've seen through this whole series so far and we're only halfway through it that we get a bit of a positive spin to it Okay, so um, you might have just caught before, this is Graham Park from the uh, Shooters Union, and he knows the, he knows the story. Thousand members in Something we're all too familiar with. The gun control thing in Australia is a never-ending uh, story because the people on one side of the argument keep wanting to make it stricter and stricter and stricter and the reality for anyone who owns firearms is they have seen the regulations and the policies change incrementally all over that time to make it far more difficult to own firearms especially for those who use them occupationally Do ammunitions anyone? Let's make it harder Let's not Alrighty, so here goes Robert Borsack from the Shooters, Fishers, Farmers, and I reckon he's dead on. Well, as a movement, um, eventually we need to widen our base, and we think that we've got an affinity as a party with the bush, and we want to work on that. We want to make a better deal out of that as far as the people, for the people in the bush. Alright, so what he said... Now, all the hunters that go out and shoot the vermin, etc., right, for no cost. It costs the Australian government nothing. All we do is protect native species. We keep all of the feral animals under control. You can see where it's going. What, why is it such a big issue? But then, you can see his head's on the screen now. He's popping up again. Ooh. Oh, look, I look just like him, almost, except his hair seems to be missing a little bit. You been whittling away at your hair or something there, Phil? Shooters and the fishers and the farmers was a really clever idea and it got them a long way and it's kept them in power. They've got the balance of power quite often, which is scary when you think about what a tiny minority they are. South Wales ready access. So we'll give it a pause there and we'll head into the next bit. Poor Phil. Here we go again. Now, uh, shooters, fishers, farmers have already pointed this one out. I know that for sure. I don't know what this copper's on about. Ex copper, I should say. Moves to tighten firearms laws have been resisted. Well, I never knew it was so easy to get a firearm licence. I, I thought that they brought in laws to make it more and more difficult. And, you know, it was it, after finding out um, what happened in my matter. It... All right. Your matter and the actual licensing requirements are two completely different things, mate. Have you ever tried to get a handgun licence? No, you haven't. You used to be a cop, you were given one, and that's it. Now, for the rest of us, we've all got to be members of a pistol club, we've got to do X amount of shoots a year, you've got to have it locked up like Fort Knox. This bloke is a banana. Now, what actually happened to him, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Don't get me wrong. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with... Uh, how strong the laws are at the moment. They're probably too strong. Might I also add while I'm here, um, can't remember, I'm pretty sure it was somewhere in New South Wales, down in the market or something, and there was a policewoman, and she was trying to shoot a perpetrator, 
and all she did was hit innocent bystanders and we all know that shooters are a great shot generally speaking but I don't think the police are actually up to the task with the amount of shooting that they do so there's another thing to ponder whilst we skip on to the next bit so here we take up uh, Mr. X New South Wales Police's uh, story. The gunman was a member of St. Mary's Pistol Club in Sydney's West, run by a lobby group, the Sporting Shooters Association. His firearms license had expired three months before the shooting, but illegally he'd kept the weapon at home. An inquest heard he was probably mentally ill. Um, an inquest heard he was probably mentally ill. His license had expired three months prior. Whose fault's that? Is that his fault? Because he doesn't want to lose his guns? Or is that New South Wales Police's fault for not acting on it sooner? I think we all know the answer to that one. It's quite simple, really. Now we've got this bird. Um, many of you will rec uh, uh, recognise her face. Uh, let's listen to her story. Now, once again, it's tragic. Don't get me wrong, it is tragic. But let's listen to her story. It's... The firearms laws required people to be licensed before they could shoot a firearm. In 2008, they amended the law to allow people to access a club and shoot even though they were unlicensed. We wanted to look to get people who were interested in going shooting an opportunity to turn up at a range and have a shot. And uh, I, think, I think history has shown us that with a couple of uh, exceptions in the last 10 years that uh, uh, that's largely worked properly uh, and it's worked well. The law change had devastating consequences for Michelle Fernando's family. Well, my father was shot and killed with a pistol from the Sydney Pistol Club. And the person who shot him was one of my sisters. She was very mentally ill at the time. And she was accessing the club through the loophole in the law. Had she gone through a proper licensing process, then it seems highly likely to me that a background check would have raised concerns about her mental health. And we'll just pause her right there. She actually lied on her form, as far as I'm aware. This is uh, from what I believe. She lied on her form. And also, she stole the handgun that she used to kill this woman's father. So, um, there was nothing wrong with what happened before. And there have been um, other shootings from certain, uh, you know, shooting gallery places, uh, you know, same sort of same sort of deal. You go in, you pay your money, you can shoot a couple of different uh, pistols. Um, there have been other deaths there, but these people were intent on killing themselves. And if it wasn't done that way, then it would have been done another. And we all damn well know it only too truthfully. Now let's uh, check out this bit. I think because the gun lobby is incredibly powerful. Gun lobby? It wields a, a level of power that is disproportionate to the interests, the minority interests that it represents. As tragic as that particular example is, we don't think that, think that one or two or maybe three in the last ten, year, ten years of failures should actually mitigate against the creation of maybe another 20, 30, 40, 50,000 licences of perfectly ordinary people who just want to participate in the sport of shooting. True story. Thanks, Rob. Here we go again. 
She says one thing and then she says another. Ah, push too far forward. I'll fix that. Alright, so we'll try again. I have to die for a small group of people to pursue a sport in such a casual way. I'm not even asking that nobody be allowed to shoot for fun anymore. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm just asking that access to firearms not be so casual. Um, is access to firearms casual? I don't believe so. Are we casual in our safety? No, I don't think so. Has Michelle ever been to a range and actually tried any of this? To see how safe it is? No, I don't think so. So you can make up your own mind about that one. Now let's hear a bit more uh, bullshit from Tim Fisher. As a parliament of the land in 1996, at that time, together we made a difference. John Howard's reforms took the semi-automatics and the automatics out of the suburbs towns and yes it was a turning point and it made a difference that's painful to watch that's too painful to watch and tim you're just talking crap because as many of us know like with john avery swapping sides and things like that why was there no coronial inquest why is there no um, you know, Royal Commission. Um, it's just something that you went and did. And, like, these are my thoughts. My thoughts, remember. But I believe it needs to be investigated. Here I come again. Time to talk some shit. There are three pillars to gun control. One is licensing, the next is registration, and then, of course, there's it, that it's a conditional privilege, not a right, to own a firearm. Now, all of those three are still intact in the National Firearms Agreement. What's happened is that there's been a lot of whittling away around the edges, trying to water down the effect of the law, to do anything possible to reduce the effect of the law for the convenience of shooters and the benefit of the arms industry. And that's been going on for 20 years now. And there's been some success. I'm sorry, Phil. You're wrong. You are flat out wrong. It's reduction of red tape, which is, you know, just eating. Like, all the time, shooters are the victims. Honest, law-abiding shooters. And there has been no whittling. The only whittling is the whittling away your hair. That is it. All right? We st the NFA is still exactly the same. It always has been. But when you call it an NFA, which is a National Firearms Agreement, but you go and see the states and territories, well, um, and then every state and territory has different firearm laws, uh, how is that national? See? You're shooting yourself in the foot, you fool. It's um, high time... That uh, And what are your qualifications again? Associate Adjunct Professor. Um, I think I read somewhere that you actually um, sat in on a couple of lectures and I think it was the Uni of New South Wales felt sorry for you or something. And you have absolutely no idea. You've got no idea. Well, looky here. Who have we got? Roland Brown from GCA. Let's have a listen from him. That it was um, a forgery <clears throat> because um, the idea of a Tasmanian Liberal government um, wanting to reintroduce um, semi automatic uh, rapid fire guns into the hands of the community. Um, after they had been taken out of the hands of the community um, was astonishing. The stakeholders had... Um, 
I think you should have got some Mantha Lee in there as well, mate, because um, maybe you could tell us if rapid fire means two ammunitions or more. Um, we're a bit confused. I'm not sure. Are you sure? I'm not sure. And here's some more video snaps, happy snaps, of shooters enjoying their sport as they damn well should be. And there's a bit of voiceover, which isn't too cool, but... CIFA is now eyeing off elections in Victoria next month, New South Wales in March, and the upcoming federal poll. The divisive question of gun laws is again confronting Australia. We're looking to enter a new era of engagement. Uh, we want it to be open. We want people to understand who we are and why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we want governments to be held accountable for the decisions they make. It is uh, just uh, a determination by some very smart operators to uh, keep uh, attacking uh, the harmonised gun laws, gun safety laws of this country. Uh, it's about politics uh, on the margins and it's dangerous. Well, we'll end it there, folks. Um, I tried to keep it short. Um, the day has been long. I've had to do this over quite some time. But I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, that's my thoughts on what actually happened. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, you know who to stand up for, which is each other. And you know which parties to back. And we'll take it from there, alright? No worries. Have a good one.